mind's eye visual guitar method here for another 24 versions of recording the same lesson. This one I recorded completely, uh, was very proud of it, never checked the audio on it, awesome. Went to upload it yesterday uh, for my Sunday upload, which was already late, and there was no sound. So thank you for uh, whoever uh, let me know that there was no uh, sound, gave me the little message because, you know, here I am just trusting, not even realizing that I made some changes to my DAW and that affected how that it sent signal to OBS Studio here and then like no no audio happened. So um, uh, thank you for letting me know. Uh, so I caught that, deleted that, and now trying to re-record the lesson. With hopefully though some better audio and updated guitar sound. So that being said, do an audio test now. I'm sure you've got my voice adjusted so you can hear it. So hopefully uh, be an example of what the guitar will sound, guitar volume and everything else. Uh, a few disclaimers, a whole bunch of things here before we bite into the meat and potatoes of this lesson. Um, I uh, am not, uh, this lesson is about finding the notes on the fretboard. I'm not saying that this is the definitive all-time way of finding the notes on the fretboard. And as a matter of fact, I've been doing it long enough that I I probably are gonna. I still use the shortcut method that I'm gonna show you here. But there's other things about learning the notes on your fretboard in this way that come to light. About um, so there's extra bonuses or benefits to this lesson about uh, perhaps um, navigating going across the fretboard. Now, if you're a longtime viewer of the channel, you say, well, yeah, you've already done those lessons, you know, a whole bunch of years ago. And so that's the thing. I wanted to update it with the latest information I have, the latest maybe explanations, tidied up explanations I have, you know, a 2024 version. So uh, if you were looking for uh, the next advanced geometry secret that we found or a song analysis of a cool song or, well, probably not cool songs because you know what I... Anyways, um, that's, uh, this is a little bit of a... a, a retro lesson for uh, uh, geared more toward um, maybe some beginners but probably more towards people who want to see a method about uh, that may be uh, pretty functional to learn the notes of your fretboard anywhere you are oh yeah and another thing you know learning notes on the fretboard you do want an easy way a kind of a little something or other to help you get to know it because it's, it is going to have a use for you is it um, a breakthrough that gets you like, oh my gosh, like look at these sounds I can make and now I understand how they made Sultans of Swing. And, and uh, Note names are not generally going to be that um, profound, I think. But at the same time, uh, as I get more myself into learning more, constantly studying, playing, um, and creating my own... Uh, music when I can, when I can push myself to do so. I do find myself going, hey, I, there's a C sharp in this. I think that's, you know, I, I need this particular note and I'm right here on my fretboard. Where is it? Or what is this note in the chord? I know it's the five, but what is that note? Does it match with what I know about what other, you know, the rest of the harmony? And, you know, is this the C sharp that I'm thinking of? There's all kinds of ways you might want to know to note that um, of a particular spot on the fretboard and know it like that. So um, here's some of the ways you can do that. Now, why it's hard? Um, well, because um, people will try to learn all 12 notes. I'll show you a way that um, we can sort. We'll, we'll try to get around that. We'll see if there's a way that we can know less notes and get the same information. And you might say, well, yeah, Mark, that's easy. Uh, you just learn all the whole notes, and then you only have to slide, you know, you, you slide down one to get to the, the sharp or flat. So, for example, you take people's information that they tell you when someone says, hey, we need B flat. Where's that B flat in this area of your guitar? Well, instead of trying to find, per se, a B flat in the mix of all these 12 choices, maybe you know where a B is, consider the information, you know, as two parts. You heard the note B, and then someone said flat it. 
So if it, they said, hey, we need a B, you found a B, it was easy. There's a B? Oh, my God, there's a B in here. Uh, terrible joke. So um, you found a B really easy, and you didn't get stung. But they said B flat. So if you found your B, then you just flat it um, by moving toward the headstock. So I think what I did here is I put the symbol in. Yeah, I put it in backwards. And it's funny because... I changed this around. I did this lesson once before, and this was the other way, and I thought I had it wrong. So I redid the lesson and redid the symbol, and then I realized I wanted it that way. And so I retyped it, and now I typed it in backwards from where I originally... It's a big flip-flop of everything. It doesn't make any sense to you guys, but sorry. Anyways, what I wanted to do is have this... Let me try to see if I can even make that happen. I, the stupid point here is that the... Um, the sharp and flat on the guitar are opposite of the way you might think about it. So in other words here, we got um, uh, basically we would have sharp slash flatius. All right. Insert, close, select. All right. So as you can see here, on this side of the slash is a sharp on that side of the slash is b flat right c c sharp d flat so you're trying to learn all these notes and sharps on sharps this way flats this way but that doesn't help you on your guitar because on your guitar it's the other way if i want to flatten a note if I, someone said b flat so here i am with my easiest b on the e string which i'll show you in a second i'm gonna go flat i'm gonna go toward the headstock flat is lowering it flat tire goes lower all right a sharp tire i don't know what a sharp tire does but anyways sharp it i would go north if i needed to be sharp well we know of the deal there or hopefully you know the deal there we're playing c not b sharp so anyways if i want to sharpen the c i'm gonna go up to the body of the guitar so that's automatically in reverse so let's kind of get that straightened out here you can you want to think as a guitarist flat on this side sharp on this side flat is going that way toward your headstock and sharp is toward the body of the guitar i mean sharp its note raises up flat the note goes you know down in sound so down a tone all right so now also let's just consider um the whole notes a, B, C, D, E, F, and G as all we need. Since we've just discussed that a quick and simple way to tidy up our learning here and keep it simple is to just consider the whole notes and consider if somebody gives you the second piece of information, it's sharp, it's flat. They'll always say, hey, I need a B sharp. I need a D flat, right? I mean, most commonly, I don't think anyone's going to say, hey, we need a sharp and D. We need a flatted D. I mean, you could say that, but... Um, all right, so and so we know step one, consider just those notes. Step two, uh, know that you're moving this way or that way. So easy, right? And uh, so we get to our next sheet among us here. And for some reason, well, it didn't click over there. All right, so... All right, so... We know that, and now you want to find these on your fretboard. So what uh, better way to find a note than to use A, the string you already know, and get a two-for-one deal out of it. You use the E string, and we know since it's E, we've got our alphabet, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. Pretty sure uh, it's the first thing you learn, but you get the second benefit. A lot of people don't visualize is that with a little sharpened D there, what that or sharpened uh, C there. That was smart. All right, how about we try that again? I still think I'm. <laughs> I was like, why didn't that sound good? Uh, it's for, uh, e is, never mind. It's starting from the third of the, that's, never mind. Start confusing everybody. All right, so 
there is the uh, you you got your two for one deal there. Obviously, you know the high E string. I know the high E string was just you know that on camera thing. So, anyways, we've got um, step four here. The alternative that can get you totally through this lesson um, this easy. You just know your octave rows. And in case you, like me, first learned your octave rows kind of like on your own, then um, you may have learned trying to get just one in the screen here without my over picture overlay, but here we go. Um, so you may have learned it like this. This is more of like a caged thought process. So like I'm gonna use G as the uh, as the note here. <laughs> So then we would have the purple um, constellation there and the green constellation. And that kind of matches with your R chord and all your cage shapes are really are, are kind of um, popping out. I wanted to say elucidate again, but I use that word too much. So anyways, um, there's your, there's that idea. But if you separate into these groups, once again, two rows of, um, this goes more along with our, uh, fretboard navigational thinking. And this is, uh, the wrong again. So you don't want to screw up. There's the, you know learn the shapes there's a little bit of anomaly there for the g to b string it's typically skip a string skip a fret but you have to skip the two frets for when you're there but it's the same pattern for both of these um basically you start on the sixth string start on the fifth string or consider it vice versa the one or the two string and work backwards so therefore if i find a note and it's like um right here i could look at my high e string and bring it back or I could take two steps and um, you know go back to my A string which I might know um, you know you just relate your note to the closest E string relative so if I'm here on the B string I might go up one and two I might even know when I'm here oh yeah okay that's a G so if I landed here and I didn't know where I was I might go and even by the time I got here I'm like oh yeah that's an octave away from G this must be a G but I need G flat I need G sharp I need G all right so there's all that and then it's pretty much as easy as that but if you want to go deeper let's follow along all right so we could separate this into two groups a D and G and B, C, and E, F. Here they are highlighted with two different colors. What is the logic behind these two groupings? Are this just a random group of notes? Well, if you look close, our group involves the t the our blue group is uh, the half steps in the major scale. There's two half steps, hence these two group two blue um, groups here, and then there's these three single notes that don't have a note on either side of them, have a sharper flat on either side of them, basically. And so um, these are, this is our green group, we'll call that ADG, which we will get to. And so the blue group we've gone over, but uh, let's kind of uh, review in a more concise way than I've done before. Um, so let's start with the blue and discover the square. So what we want to do is two things. We want to see if, um, you know, where where does this blue... Um, stack on the fretboard. Now remember our octave pattern there was working in these two rows going this way or that way. And so here we have an example of these two rows that it should form theoretically this block should octave pattern toward that block and that block should octave pattern toward that and vice versa. And then we can even see the added bonus of whenever we are find ourselves at the bottom two strings here and we feel like we'd like to continue on but where's the top row start you go directly above because the e strings are the same so it stands to reason that the uh,
boxes will always be above each other in a certain way. All right. So let's go down and, uh, well, actually, we're, we're just going to check that in, on our next sheet there. So the next thing we want to look at then is, so if, if these stack like a square, or even maybe we just want to say, hey, where, where even so, where does the next blue thing fall? Is there any geometry here we can find? So here's a hint. Right here, where this uh, arrow is, we have a B note. And we're like, hey, B, C is one of our blue squares. So it stands to reason that, number one, there's got to be a C note right there. For sure. And I don't know why that wasn't reacting. Anyways, so there's our C note. So it stands to reason that for sure there must be a blue note right there. So we we first populate our, uh, when we fill that in, we see that there's a square. So we're like, hey, is that how this works? Is this really a B, C, E, F square? Or if we were to move this away from our, we're using this A, B, C, D, E, F, G because this gives us our whole notes. That's the C major scale. You don't even need to know that. Um, and you say, well, then why is it starting on A there? That's the A natural minor scale. But anyways, you don't even need to know that. But if you do, that's awesome. And you know the relationships, that's awesome. But anyways, so this could be like you can move this up the fretboard. And, of course, the notes inside will change. But And you would know where you are by knowing that the intervals are always the same. This is always the one. This is always 7, 1, 3, 4 if you want to talk intervals, but that's, I'll leave that for people who know like what that, the implications of that are like, like, oh yeah, okay. Those are the intervals and that's where they lock in, but not today's lesson. So actually let's, let me, uh, jump off that little, uh, sidetrack there and get back on track here. All right. So we know that moving this way is going to be, uh, going sharp. Moving this way is going to be flat. So it stands to reason that if we just knew this B, C, E, F box, now we know, um, you know, if we're here, all right, so uh, my box is here on the uh, seventh fret, B, C, E, F. There's E flat. Someone says F sharp. Well, there's my box, so there's an F sharp. So just with the box, you can get C sharp, B flat, E flat, F sharp. There's C sharp, F sharp, B flat, E flat. All right, so um, there's that. Now let's connect them like those arrows we're showing in the next sheet. Now, how will we do that? And um, so little key legend here we should talk about. Let's go over this area right here. What we have here is the E string half box. So in some sense, sometimes, as you see here, when we filled out our boxes, just uh, we got this one here, uh, down, up, down. And this down one isn't just an octave higher of that one. So, we've got all that. The E string, ha it leaves some half boxes there. Um, on these, on the, the other leftover boxes are the half boxes. So that happens when there's, you know, you would need another string to complete the box. So cool, that happens. We know why we see just two in certain parts of the fretboard. Now, our boxes, very, the regular navigation connection is this. If you find yourself in one of these boxes, well, where's the next part of the fretboard you're going to be to be at the exact same spot? Because this is all there is, so there must be a simple connection point. And another thing is, sometimes um, when I, before I knew this, when I would play something, you know, my mind would be locked into this pattern. Cool. But where's the next pattern? I kind of know that it's... But, oh, wait, that's the, yeah, blah, blah, blah. So, um, I would know that I would begin to trust that I'm going to find that box connected um, at this corner. And within this, you'll notice if we consider the notes that we're talking about, these must connect at this corner, meaning that B and F keep repeating in a line of this, in this connection line. That is the tritone row is within this square shape. This helps you locate the tritone in the scale that you're playing. The tritone is going to be that important interval that is involved with the five chord that you're going to hear about a lot and the diminished chord that you're going to hear 
from time to time and will learn to have um you'll want to eventually know if you get far enough and are interested in that kind of uh, music playing the the functions and the uh real um different places that uh diminished type ideas can get you to um for beginners don't take that too far that's not a big secret don't go out and uh start learning oh i better that's a secret i'll go learn about diminished chords because that uh won't uh have a huge payoff by itself without a whole bunch of other kind of ideas compiled on top so moving on back to our non-tangent program here um the, you will find a couple other anomalies, and here they are. Uh, these are the B, uh, the broken boxes over the G to B string shift. So you got a broken box, and it's going to look like this, and you'll find it down here. And you'll find it all at Eastview Mall. All right, sorry, you got it for B. From where I've, I'm from, to make, for that to make sense, if you, everyone around here is like, oh my gosh, I know where that is. But everybody else doesn't. All right, so, um, but you have them all with a jingle, I'm sure. Found within the Aeolian scale box. So when I find this broken box, I it's a navigation key to me in that I'm like, every time I'm there, if I found this box, I'm playing with a major scale, and that means I'm here. can see like how everything sounded harmonious there it was all within the scale and the extra bonus is whenever you find one of these boxes that's in a pentatonic scale um there's two of them two boxes for uh for these pentatonic framework scales that show up three different places within a major scale did you know that there were three pentatonics this is what i was talking about with the little valuable insight things that this method will teach you but we need to get uh, moving into the heart of this. So um, the other uh, thing here, the other anomaly crossing the G to B string, G to B string shift is the Dorian gap, kind of like the Darian gap or Darian gap or whatever you call it, somewhere down south where it's a very hard place to cross. So it's not very hard to cross here on the fretboard, but it is a little gap in the navigation so you have to consider that when you're here you're gonna skip a fret instead of that corner to corner um thing i was talking about that exists everywhere else So now we know what to expect. Let's populate our board here. So now we see row one. We're gonna we're gonna get row one and row two. Let's call row one the broken box row. You know why we're gonna call it the broken box? Because it contains all the broken boxes. How amazing is that? We have the broken box on the E string. It stands to reason then we're gonna have the other side of the broken box on the other E string, as geometry would suggest. And so our connection point is going to be there, and we can see this developing perhaps as what we might know as a, well, I'm not going to give it a name because that starts to confuse people, but it's a scale shape that they'll teach you. So we got EF, um, we've got the square going up right there, and our broken box, and... Um, you know, when you navigate from these squares, you navigate from one pentatonic. I consider this in a pentatonic. There's our two, two and a half, actually. And this, actually, they all have two and a half. Yes, they do. They all have two and a half. Um, when I go from 
this box into this box. Now I'm in my Aeolian sector. That's the kind of naming connotation I was trying to avoid here. This would be my Phrygian box. This would be um, stepped into my Aeolian idea, and my Aeolian will step me into my Dorian idea like that. Look at that go. And can you guess out there in the audience what notes might be in this blue square? Hmm? Big trick question, right? Yeah, obviously. Um, I hope you were shouting out the right notes and following along. It's B, C, E, F. Right, But if you move this up, it would be other notes. But we're trying to also uh, learn this navigation so we can kind of learn a, a way to get to our regular notes just from this uh, locking this position into this area of the fretboard. However, um, you can move this. This is all movable. So that being said, um, let's move on with our sheets here the sheet so we've basically solved for the rubik's blue cube here um we've got b c e f all over the fretboard so if i go here well i know my my b c e f is down here but now there's more the next remember we got to get to the green notes which would help me also like a double up way to determine what note that is but Moving down, I've got a C. So this is C sharp, and it must be therefore D flat. Alright, so C structures. Oh, that's for my. We already did that. So now we've basically, so from here on out, we've done everything we could to look at the blue uh, squares. And this is the pentatonic structure idea I was talking about. This is our basic pentatonic structure, right? And you can see it if you look very clear closely. We've got this one that we may know, like we talked about, as the Phrygian shape. This E is the third note of the C scale. This one's starting up here on E, so that gives it its name. Does it have anything to do with playing modes? Not really per se so total other lesson check those out they're all over the we explain that a million times on the channel how to make modes super easy and if you want another lesson about it put it in the comments speaking since i'm mentioning the comments if you're finding that this lesson is pretty cool well, i don't think it gets cool until we get to the green wall there that's coming up but if you think it's cool definitely hit like hit subscribe so i don't have to say that at the end of the lesson and notifications um, and leave a comment, you know, uh, let me know, uh, what your thoughts were, how valuable was this? Was this, uh, wasting your time and you want me to put on some more better material? I don't know. Just say something. And there we are back to the C note. So, and the Aeolian shape there with the blue box. Anytime you got a half step, you're in the blue box. Not in the blue box. In the blue box. Outside, 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 outside. In, 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 in. All right. Um, you know, we were somewhere down here. We went here and here. I was just thinking, like, your audience can hear you playing. Your hands go off the screen there, so... Is anybody following along with this? But hopefully your guitar's in your hands and you're able to follow along. And hopefully I'm tuned up good. I really don't, didn't really check the tuning before I started the lesson. You're just kind of, guitar holds a pretty good tune, so it's usually pretty good. Um, Moving on, down the road here. So we're going to get to our uh, ADG idea here, so... Um, time for our green notes. Now keep in mind there is a wall right here that's of our leftover. Our green notes are our gray notes, by the way. Uh, everything left over from the blue is a green note. There's no other um, notes except the sharps and flats now, which, by the way, make a pentatonic scale, but we won't go there. Um, but if you are ever in a major scale and you slide up one note um, to a sharper flat, and you play a pentatonic scale from there, you're completely outside. You're playing at those moments, you're outside. And your inside is going to be a slide back to one, but better make sure that you slide back into the note you want. 
or it may not sound as hip and cool as, and it may may lead you like, hey, how's everybody, you know, do this because it just still doesn't sound good, and it can be, it's, it is, you know, it takes a little bit of work to, with your ear training and your knowledge to really get those moments to sound hip. Oh, and your uh, attention to the rhythm in your playing. It's so important. Um, all of this, a lot, I see so many things that get so absorbed into like this scale. And it's really not just that, you know, the guitars get very guitar centric in music and the music that you want to play with your other bandmates has so much to do with in your tone too, you know, you, you may have to, you know, set up a, a, I'm getting, I'm getting off tangent here, but <laughs> you know, you may have to really, you know, your, your awesome guitar tone in, in your bedroom, it may not be what works best with your band on stage. Um, in the same realm as with your, you know, it's just, I went off on a tangent. I'm sorry. You know, pay attention to the beat. Sorry. <laughs> ADG is a wall right there. Um, and I am the walrus. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> ADG. And so now let's, uh, do like we did before and go right back, revert to our E string for our, to build the wall here. We don't need this education. The wall. I love the wall. Anyway, so G, A, and D are here on the low E and high E strings. So let's build them, per se, from here. So we already discovered that we had one on the uh, first wall here. And that being said, um, let's start with this. We want to give this ADG like a name so we can kind of know where you are on the fretboard. If you're not in the box, where are you? You're on ADG. You really want to know that. You really want to get that in your head. It's, it, it really helps you, um, or at least it really helped me to know like if I'm you know not in the square, I'm in my six, my two, or my five of my scale. But intervals are another way to, to know that. Um, that'll help you when you're, you know, translating this up and down and just the scale, you know, not having to know all the sharps and flats of your key. You're just using, you know, a guitar pattern based idea to get into different keys. Um, so I like, I, I like to keep saying that, you know, the, the possibilities, you know, so, so people don't form thoughts that they're, you know, that this is locking them into somewhere. But at the same time, um, some of those ideas are uh, create the need for a whole nother bunch of explanations. And I got to watch that because if you don't stay on topic here, these lessons will go nuts and they'll go um, way longer, as this one probably already is. Guitars Diatonic Anomalies. So that's what you could name this um good days abound you know like in one of those things you can put anyone in here always doing good but here's one i like because this sometimes you want to really make these things effective and you know what's happening here is i might find this note here okay the d but i need the g um and was the G above the D or below the D? I know there's that ADG wall this guy told me about, but ah oh man, I can't remember. Is that G on top or bottom? This is stupid. You know, if you if you don't set some of these things up, that can happen. But if I always think now, first of all, I just know now that that wall exists. Okay, so it's you know ADG, just like my open strings. It's always going to be A on top, G on bottom. But if D was like your you're basically your, you know, your home note of this three note thing, this three note wall, then A stands for above and G stands for ground. So G is the note toward the ground. And A is the note that's above D. Ah, look at that. All right, so that's what I thought was pretty cool. So the, now, another thing we're going to have to know about, only um, just like the blue squares had two shapes that are were affected by the G to B string anomaly, this wall shape also has two shapes that are affected by the two shapes that are created uh, as they transgress the uh, G to B string shift. And here they are. So we would have and 
um, not to uh, guitar scale here, but in a general sense, you'd have A, D, and G. So you'd have like, um, here, I'll do it uh, where they should be. Now those are all a fourth apart or a fifth if you go in the other direction. And so that's why it's sounding like some kind of movie thing there. Now there's that, um, we put the uh, square in there. Now, do you know what key that was in? Right off the bat, just when I did that? That was in the key of G. You know how I knew? Because I played the square right there. And that's where my G note is. And that's always the one. So that was all. In the key of G. Pretty cool, right? So, um, you'll have that shape there, and you'll have this shape here, way down here. Oh, it starts second fret. Give me that same notes. All right, let's move on from there. I think you guys got that. Before we belabor our points too much. So now we have the ADG. Stands to reason that if the open strings go ADG, so does the 12th fret. And so now we have basically the top, the bottom, and each side. So this must be police because they have you surrounded. I'm sorry, that's a dumb joke. All right, so there's that. We have, uh, we're totally surrounded, and now what? what's this beef in the middle here? Well, we can solve this, kind of like math here. Let's solve for G, A, and D, class. And we can solve this right from G, A, and D. We are going to build our structures either down or up from their respective letters, and we're going to show you how that's done here. So, what we'll find here is the very first shape, it builds down from G, because, hey, if G is on the bottom, that means that there's no more notes here. But then again, you'd even ask, well, gee, that leaves a huge blank hole. Well, no, it doesn't, because at the end, you're going to see that the blue square is right there. The G always leads into the blue square. It's totally cool. But right here, we have the A, D, G here. And we just went over there, and a G at the top. Cool. So now, does the A string flip the geometry right around let's check it out oh my god it does with the exception that it doesn't go over the anomaly so that note stays in its wall type of shape the wall in musical too huh I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> kind of cool. All right, let's just jam on A, D, and G for a while. Play your playing in fourths and fifths. Uh, from the D, the five. Well, anyways, at that point, there's no, there's no key. It could be a couple, any key. Oh, wait, sorry. Here we go. Uh, A, D, G. Um... We've got that. So basically, oh, now we, so we move down here and we solve for DG. Here's another thing. In this sequence here of G and A, we've got a complete wall coming from one and just one note on the other E string. Here we've got a complete wall and the three note wall. And we've got the uh, A uh, as a single note on that A string. Okay, cool. So what happens on this string that would make kind of like a, that would balance out the ge geometry. Well, the um, this one has a two on the outside pairs, and that should look familiar to you because you're thinking, hey, yeah, that's where that the square is, where that Dorian gap is. So what if we fill everything in here with the blue, um, which is I think what we'll do next. Let me move some slides over here, because good lord, we got a couple more to go. Um, all right, yeah, so 17, sorry. So here we go um, with, uh, I've got a, I had a double sheet there, so that, it's cool because that gets us one sheet less. Uh, apparently, I've got three sheets here that are the same for some reason. Sorry, folks. Here we go. Finally, we've got the, um, we're popul now let's start populating 
and see take away all those you know blank areas so now we've got the uh, BCEFE square there and the GDA there so in theory like if somebody calls out a note you know you've you've basically got two groups that they're gonna fall into someone's gonna say C you know it's in your blue group someone's gonna say this is a D it's in your green group or your it's in your ADG group if you if you use your own colors here you can your synthesis may be different from mine right if that's I'm pretty sure what they call it but anyways um so you're thinking okay someone just called out someone said D flat so then I find the D which is I want to be here on my fretboard I know that shape is there there's gonna be D flat or let's say I just ended up right here uh, what note is that well let's see uh, that's here so there's D must be an E or I could have gone octave there's my uh, most uh, widely known E because you know after wasn't I've been playing a long time so uh, you know the A string is also clearly memorized for me you're gonna have C and E E's was in like 99% of every song I ever learned and every other one had D in it and every other one was oh yeah sorry no copyright strikes right getting out of hand there all right so um no yeah now let's take a look at this wall shape it's pretty cool there is another way you can traverse this exact same, nothing changes here, but the visualization changes. There's a different way to visualize this that can also get you through this GAD sequence here. And I'm gonna play it for you right now. So um, what I did was there is I played this little uh, L-shaped lick, which you see here in the purple and the dark green. These were the two basic shapes. And if you repeat that, I've got them in the rows here. I've got the purple row and the green row, but I've got them uh, lighter and darker to kind of break up uh, visually so you could see what I was concentrating on as I played. I played GAD like this. And then I knew my octave link up there. And then I knew I had to, you know, do the same thing, but move it up a fret. And then my pattern is directly above that, because I landed on D, and I'm starting on D. And then it's completely right above that, because, you know, I'm up here, but if we look down here, we can see that the GAD is... Which got me right to that last fret of this... Fender Strat with that extra fret from those old original models. I'd only had what, like 21 frets? This one, yeah, you gotta have that extra fret because you gotta go. Oh no, copyright strikes there. Alright. Do 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 bound down now now. Money. Please give us your money. How about that? All right, so um, let's put it all together then, shall we? We can get right up to sheet number 21 here with one sheet left to go. So we've got this now. We know that every time we've got ADG, we've got a... not saying you have to put that there you can you know juggle things around and be in any key you want but this is the completion of um the c major scale with our gad and our bcef square so it gives you you know f most a, a way to go you know uh okay so gad is going to be the flat of d the flat of a the flat of g also the sharp of f so, there's your F, F sharp. So you can, you know, someone calls out a certain note, you can say, hey, um, you know, oh, they said F, I'm in my blue square, here's my, you know, here's where my square would be, you know, because we're in the, this key. Well, 
not not even that. Um, you would just know that this key that you're going to use is going to would stay in this place for this, you know, just for the notes. Um, and you may even know that um, starting from the green A, it's you know you got A and D is the outside, and the B C E F square is going to be like. So in other words, you would have A B C D F A B C D E F B C D E F. Sorry, we're in off the camera there. Final thing I wanted to show you. Sorry for wasting your time there. Um, while I'm sitting here jamming on your guys' lesson, the B C E F, and, and I want to get to this awesome point here. I hope anybody's sticking around because here's the real crux of today's lesson. Check this out. If you're making a melody line, consider this um, switching from green to blue. So if I played, for example, I'm going to just go anywhere here with this square. I'm going to be outside the key that we're talking about here. So we're here, here it is. Didn't work as good as I thought, but I'm going to try that again and um, show you that Melodies kind of sound cool when you stick with, uh, start with blue. Green. Blue. different ideas almost so like you could almost um make a melody that um you know is calling and responding to itself just by separating these ideas i think that was the biggest um cool thon of this lesson i'm gonna leave you guys with that i'm sure it's already been way longer than it needs to be my apologies for apologies for being long-winded but i've said everything i need to say for the lesson so we'll thank you and see you next week for maybe even something better leave it in the comments below uh for what something that you'd like to see um and we'll go from there thank you guys for watching again hope this helped some way and let me know if it did thank you for watching have a good day